Today on Houston Life, one of Houston's favorite traditions is back. See a preview of the Bayou City Art Festival full of art, food, and music. Plus, why proper floor maintenance is critical to ensure a long-lasting life on brand new floors. The tips you need to know to keep your new home looking new. Then, he's got the right stuff. Baby, I don't know. I was waiting for you to jump in, Derek. Joey McIntyre from New Kids on the Block joins us with a look at their upcoming mixtape tour. Hopefully you guys are sticking with us through that. Find out how you can win tickets to see them in concert. And all aboard for a haunting ride at the Rosenberg Railroad Museum. We are learning more about their ghostly encounters and a big Halloween fest happening for the entire family. All that and much more happening right now on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, October 7th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. It's good to have you here on this Friday Eve. Friday Eve, baby Friday. And you had a lovely morning today. I did. I had a, a beautiful luncheon for a really great organization. Of course, you've heard about them here on the show, Heroes for Children. This is Lauren on my left and Allie on, I'm sorry, Lauren on my right and Allie on my left, if you're or screen, I don't know, whatever. Lauren, me, and Allie. Here, there, there you go. go. They are the <laughs> event chairs for uh, Heroes and Handbags, and the proceeds of this event benefits families with chi that has a child battling cancer. Oh, wow. You know what's really fantastic is what I learned today is during the shutdown, uh, so the last 18 months, every Friday is when they do their, their check writing and making sure these families can pay rent mortgages, light bills, all of the necessities while their child and family is really in the hospital, worried and battling and enduring this fight of childhood cancer. Um, they never missed a payment to a family. They never missed uh, sending out a check. Um, and also what's really fantastic is this is something I never thought about until today. Uh, we always talk about pediatric cancer. Of course, September, uh, you know, we focused on that for the awareness. They have what's called a fertility program for children who, you know, are battling something that could affect them later, later on, on in, in life. life. And the Heroes family, the executive director today, talked about how uh, they, they had a, a survivor who is in her late 20s, now married. She went to A&M, um, but she just had a baby. And that was because of the fertility program that, that they were able to fund for this young girl battling cancer and was wow. able to be able to have a family. That's incredible. Really incredible, the work that's being done there. And, and like the executive director said, you know, I wish I could go find a new job. I wish this is something that we didn't need. We didn't need. And the truth is, it's needed. These families have to make decisions sometimes on, do I put food on the table? Do I pay the light bill? What's going on? And um, they take a little of that burden away for the families. What a terrible position to be in. And I feel like so much of what happens in life, it's really just the cards that you're dealt, right? right? And and how you handle that situation. And if you have great insurance and if you have childcare and all of these things, uh, maybe you don't appreciate what so many families go through. But I think it's great that organizations out there exist to make up the difference and fill in those gaps. And the, the two women that founded this organization know all too well. They founded it in 2004 after both losing their young daughters to childhood cancer. And so talk about a full circle moment, paying it forward and really taking that grief and, and, and moving it forward and learning how to help people. It, it, it's really unbelievable. Well, I'm so glad you were able to get out and support the cause and, uh, and still get here to work, too. I got here. I, know. I am here. It was a beautiful today. morning. Well, it's a beautiful morning, a beautiful day. There are so many things. Don't you feel like people are kind of coming out of hibernation now? A little bit. The weather's cooling down. It's feeling great. The Bayou City Art Festival is happening this weekend. You know we're both big fans of the symphony. Yes. Right, oh, as well. Yes. Shifting to symphony now. So their 2021-22 season is already off and running. Guys, this weekend's jazz headliner, jazz headliner rather, 
unreal. His name is Dave Bennett. Courtney, you and I saw the video. We did. Our jaws were on our desks because this guy plays so many different instruments. The clarinet, he's unbelievable on it. The piano, you can see him right now. So this weekend, he is the special guest star for the symphony's pop concert. It's called Whole Lot of Shake and Swing to Rock. He'll take the audience on a journey from swing era classics. You can't help but dance when you hear Glenn Miller, oh. Elvis, Johnny Cash, and truly, I've never seen anyone perform this way. And that clarinet, again, the piano, they're just two of his instruments. And he has all kinds of, uh, you know, inspirations like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Alice Cooper, Chris Isaac as his influencers. So buy tickets, go out, you'll be glad you did. I mean, what a complete show there. It's going to cover all genres. And I mean, what better way to kind of like lift you up? So listen to some really great music. I know, right? And when was the last time you went out to the symphony? They don't just do classical, they do pop. So if you don't remember the last time you went, it's time. Also, <laughs> one more note very quickly. So yeah. Richard Brown Band, we've had them here right on Houston Life. Kelly Peters, Bob Luna, we've had them on the show. Christina Wells from America's Got Talent, Sean Sounds from The Voice, also friends of Houston Life, appeared on the show many times. This is the Sunday Supper Club. Oh, it's back. The, and it's back, finally. Two seatings, 5 p.m., 8 p.m. It is a three-course meal by Chef Robert Del Grande. You can call the Annie for reservations and all kinds of classic songs, Courtney. Heat Wave, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Baby Love, You Can't Marry love, love. Another thing, book tickets and go. You'll be so glad you did. I got to get my mom in town for one Mine of Mine too. We Wouldn't need to do, fun? yes, because I know, mom, I know you would absolutely love it. A double mom date and love something it. you absolutely have to check out in Houston. It, and they are so talented, the Richard Brown Band and, and friends. I'm glad the symphony, I'm glad that's happening. Of course, that's happening at the Annie, so give them a call. Yeah. Um, one of the things, when I, when I hear stories about bees or beehives, I immediately think of our old photographer, not old, he just doesn't work here anymore. Former. His name's Wally Crow, and he had a bee suit. The man was always like head to toe whenever there was some kind of bee hive situation. He story. was prepared. I'm going to send him this story because listen to this. I literally my teeth are itching. A man uncovered this. I don't think giant even covers this word, this story. This giant beehive inside the ceiling of his new home. Oh. Less than a month after moving in. You see the picture on the left with the arrow? That is like the entry point to this. This happened in San Francisco. Uh, the man and his husband heard like noises coming from the ceiling and saw dead bees around the house. They Wait. brought in a beekeeper. And that's when they discovered this giant hive inside the house. So all those ripples, I mean, that's like a, that's a, that's yes. a giant beehive. It's hive, massive, it? massive. The entire removal process of this hive was documented on Twitter. Um, and the beekeeper apparently used a thermal imaging device to find the hive, which was located in the office ceiling. Oh. So it was like hearing all this weird noise kind of buzzing. Um, it is dead Oh. when they found the hive. So they couldn't start a honey business even. There's not even a bonus for finding it. There was it. not. Mm -mm. No. But robber bees from the area were trying to get in and rob the honey. I feel like there's more to this story. These are jerks. Robber bees? Now we gotta worry <laughs> about robber bees. <laughs> wow, that is quite a story. My goodness. Wow. Can you robber imagine bees? in a brand new house you move in and welcome home? Now you gotta deal with it. Robber bees. Way to get the neighborhood buzzing, right? Uh, cute. You know Insider.com if you want to see that full story. You know we love puns here at Houston Life. As long as we're on this trend, still to come on Houston Life, Wonder Woman's Linda Carter. You know her, right? Yes. Oh, obsessed with her. Wonder Huge Woman. Fan. So right now, though, she's getting called out for a very big misunderstanding. Okay. Very big. Very? Okay. Yeah. And Joe Sam is getting in a spooky tour at the Rosenberg, Ra Rosenberg Railroad Museum. Hi, Joe. This is a good spot. It really is. So if you guys can remember, we were here last time for a completely different reason. This time, we're going to be diving deeper into the ghost stories that happened here on the Quebec when we come back on Houston Life. This is so exciting. You guys know I love Halloween, and I love me a good ghost story. That's coming up in just a bit. So by now you know we are animal lovers here at Houston Life, right? Yes. Safe to say that, right? Absolutely. Our viewers as well. We love seeing your animal photos. But before we get to this next story, I feel like we need a bit of a vocabulary lesson. Why are you giving me that look? Because I don't, I don't know what's going on. 
Okay, well, we have several photos that I think we're going to show you and the viewers, Courtney. Okay. And perhaps we'll put it in this monitor. How's that sound? Okay, what is that on your screen? A bear. Okay. What is that? Teddy bear? Yeah, yeah, another bear. Okay, and what's that? A bare-chested man. Oh, okay. Well, that was a fantastic answer. In some circles, this person might also be considered a bear. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you not know? You've never heard this before? That someone who looks like this might be a bear? He's got a little chest hair. Oh. He's a little larger, like a bear. Okay. No, it doesn't no. make sense. I can hear Lauren Kelly laughing. She might know. Oh, okay, gosh. well, let's get to the story then. Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. She is so lovely, right? We love her. She recently tweeted, you know, we were talking about the bear bracket, about fattening up the bears that bear week. to go into hibernation. Yes. Well, Linda Carter writes, I kept hearing about Fat Bear Week and thought it was a celebration of body positivity within a gay subculture. It turns out it is about actual bears. Either way, I'm here for it. What? <laughs> Does this make sense to you? No, what? So you didn't know that like some gay guys, you call them bears. You didn't know this? No. Oh, you, well, first is of all, Is this like a known welcome. fact? It's like a thing. So For like, who? Uh, does everybody, am I the only one that know, doesn't know this? Did you know about this, Lauren Kelly? Yeah, yes, I did. Lauren yes, I did. knew about this. <laughs> so like, you know, it's just a larger, perhaps, hairy dude. Furry, furry you dude. You could call him like, you could call him a bear. So like, let's say I'm a bear and I'm looking, well. <laughs> to a, a to a space? Bear, and I'm setting up a dating profile, I could be like, bear looking for, you know, an otter. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll save the otter for another day. <laughs> what heard, is happening? Have you heard of that? <laughs> I haven't heard of otter, but like, I definitely know bear. I just got a mental image of like a dating profile, like ASL, bear here, H-Town, like. <laughs> How would you describe a no, bear? That is, ex that is pretty legit. That is pretty descriptive. Yeah. So Big, we can curly, understand Linda Carter's furry. confusion. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I can't, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't have tweeted it, but I got it. I had no idea. It's totally, totally lost. A lot of people I don't understand don't know. this show. <laughs> <laughs> this show? Oh, man. Well, we still have 45 minutes left, so brace yourself. Okay, Lauren, I think you might have our question today. Uh, yes, Derek, I sure do. We want to hear from you guys. Winston Time, you misunderstood the meaning of something or anything. We've already got some great answers coming in. Let's check out what Stuart had to say. He's up first. When I was six years old, I thought that good riddance was a nice thing to say. After I said it to my aunt in Pittsburgh, I had never heard the end of it. Wow, that is definitely opposite of that. Lisa writes in, first time in traffic court, I was so nervous. Deputy said, when they say your name, call out. I didn't know we, why we had to say out. Good thing there wasn't the first name. They said here. No. Duh, call out, not no. call out. <laughs> Is Courtney here? Out. out. <laughs> and Carla, Carla says the word Dale on a baseball cap. I was going to say Dale. Dale on a baseball cap. I wondered who Dale was before it occurred to me. It read it in Spanish. It was Dale. The LOL. Then I realized it was a Pitbull reference. Wow. Uh, okay. Mm okay. Nick writes in, when asked over to watch a movie and chill, I would say, no, I don't do movies. When I finally understood what it meant, it was too late. Yeah, oh. Watching a movie and chill is definitely not what a lot of people think that it is. Okay. No. Oh, I think some people have their own meanings. Yeah. You guys head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join our conversation. Of course, we'll share more of your comments a little bit later on in the show. Now, it's out! <laughs> that <laughs> that's it! That's it. <laughs> that's well, it. remember just a couple days ago on the show when I didn't know the difference between Michael Myers and Mike Myers? <laughs> oh. That was one. And then how about the time I was in Washington, D.C., and everyone was walking around wearing those red Walgreens caps? Oh, I was like, oh. No, a lot of people in the city. Really We're support Walgreens. Walgreens. <laughs> Washington I National. Washington National. That's one of those questions where you're like, don't ask it. Just keep it to yourself and Google it later. Google right? it later. <laughs> what oh, does gosh. the Walgreens hat stand for? Oh, where can Derek? I buy the Walgreens oh, hat? They don't even sell them at Walgreens. Their logo is almost identical. I know. It is. It is. Red and white with a W. Ooh. I can Walgreens. understand the confusion. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> well, we know Courtney's answer to that question. <laughs> Wildlife confusion. <laughs> out. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Sure. We'll see you in a bit. Please I'm just call gonna call out. I'm I out. Your name. <laughs> out. <laughs> out. You said call out.
don't know. Anyway, <laughs> okay, we could be here all day. <laughs> Rosenberg's Union Depot served as the Santa Fe and Southern Pacific Railroads from 1883 until 1917. And although the old station is long gone, some of its passengers don't seem to leave. And this part of town is filled with such rich history. It is haunting, and the history brings in visitors from all across the state, including Joe Sam, who is there right now. I understand, Joe, you're on a ghost hunt? Oh yeah, it is such a great time aboard here because we're learning so much more about those haunted history that comes along with Quebec and they already have it decorated for the Halloween season, but there's some real, real Halloween things that happens in here and Rainy here is to tell me all about it because yeah. there's some great stories that comes along with this here that a lot of the visitors come and they leave with some chills and spooks. So first of all, thanks for having us aboard here. We have to learn about these stories. Tell us about one that may spook some people back at home. Great. Thanks for coming out, Joe. So we've had a couple of stories. We've had an AC vendor that was working on our AC here inside the Quebec, and he will not come back. He said he had a whole conversation with a man who was shot. He said he was shot, and um, it was a ghost, and he will only send his employees in now. Um, we also had another lady who was on a tour who ran out of the Quebec, would not come back in, refused to come back in, and said that she saw people in the kitchen, <laughs> ghosts, people in the kitchen who were covered in blood. So very scary stories. Really scary stories. And if you look down the hallway here, you can see that's where the kitchen is. So you do have to walk down those tight corners. So I can only imagine how people come running from down there trying to get off the train. It's really exciting because you guys incorporate this within some events that you do, not only here with the train, but around the city because there are so many other haunted places here in Rosenberg. So you do appetizers here. Then you said you head to another spot in town to go and do dinner and then you finish off with one of the haunted theaters here, correct? That is correct. So oh. during our gala, we auction off every year dinner and booze <laughs> on the Quebec. <laughs> so if you want to get scared, you have some appetizers and cocktails, head on over to another time soda fountain and then we go for a tour of the Cole Theater, which is very oh. haunted in downtown Rosenberg. Um, very cool, very beautiful place. And so it's a lot of so fun. So scary. And yes, <laughs> We're going to so get into scary. more of that too when we come back. We're going to be telling you guys much more about what you can do here in Rosenberg for the Halloween season. Yes. Courtney and Derek, I'm ready to go and get spooked, so I'm going to try and see if I can go and find some ghosts. You ready? the kitchen, Joe. We're going to go in the kitchen right now. <laughs> We're going to be back. You'll see me in the kitchen in just a bit. All right, report All right. back. Thanks, Joe. When we come back, art lovers, this one's for you. How you can experience the Bayou City Art Festival, plus meet this year's featured artists. And please don't go, girl. Coming up later, Lauren Kelly chats with new kid on the block, Joey McIntyre, about the group's hot new tour. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. We are so lucky to live in Houston because this weekend we have the chance to experience works of art from more than 200 artists from around the world. And the best part is it's all downtown and it's going to be our beautiful backdrop for the whole thing. Here with more is Joe Pogi, president of the Art Colony Association, who is putting this festival together. It's great to see you. It's great to be back. Right? It's been way too long and we need the Bayou City Art Festival back. We certainly do. It's one of our favorite events. I know Derek loves it as well. And of course, this one is the downtown location. Yes. Great backdrop. But let's talk about for people if they're saying weather's perfect, by the way. Oh. It is picture perfect for this weekend. Um, more than 200 artists. So walk us through this because it's literally one of the best strolls that we have in our city. Well, first of all, the artists, what they need to understand, it's a juried festival. So we get up to about 800 to 1,000 applicants that pay to apply, and then we jury them and judge, okay, here's what we want, and we limit it down to 200. So you're going to see cream de la cream of art. I mean, it's gonna, and you're going to see some here in a minute, too, of our featured artist, McKinsey. Um, and so then you, so you'll see art, you'll see paintings, you'll see sculptures, you'll see jewelry. Uh, you'll see just, there's, I think, 19 different disciplines of art that you'll be able to see. All in one setting, so I mean, down there by the Sam Houston Park, along the Allen Parkway. Uh, lots of other things to do down there. We got a craft beer, we've got a wine garden, we've got oh so many different things that you and plus live entertainment. Plus we got the Channel 2 hitch stage. Oh yes, it's a big deal. That hitch is 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 awesome. It's so much fun to bring it out in the community. It's basically like a television studio out in the community. So it's really great. But what I love about this, Joe, you hit the nail on the head. This is one of those shows that artists from around the world say 
this is a must attend. It's perfectly curated by you and the rest of the group. So when we go and stroll or want to purchase something, these are the items from all different types of art that have been perfectly selected for us. Well, if you go back in time, you don't know if you buy a piece of art together, you don't know if you're buying a future Picasso. Right. As you're going to see in, the, in part of the segment here with McKinsey, the art is just unbelievable. I, I mean, I've decorated my entire house with it. So you're going to come down. It is a great, great way to be outside. We'll have plenty of hand sanitizers and things of that sort. So it'll be safe down there. Uh, but come and enjoy it. So it's it's Saturday and Sunday. We open at 10, go till 6, um, and you'll you'll just be thoroughly entertained. It is. It's great. Food trucks, craft beer, wine garden, entertainers throughout the festival, even stuff for the kids. And Joe, we see all the event details there, so everything that you need to know. Real quickly, though, it does benefit six local charities as well. It does. We have six charities that we've designated. We get off the top of my head, we have Artists for Arts, Art uh, Art Fresh, uh, Fresh Arts. Uh, there's several of them, and you can see them on our webpage. But these organizations come to us with volunteers to help us put the festival on. They're very important to us, and so and we're a nonprofit. As well, so this is a this is a charitable aspect for Houston. We need you to come out. It's been, gosh, two and a half, almost two years, two and a half years. I know. And so we need you to come out because next spring is our 50th anniversary. Oh, that's so awesome! So great. Here's what you need to do: online pre-purchase tickets are required to enter the festival. You just saw the event details there on the screen. There's also a VIP hospitality lounge. Tickets are sixty dollars for that. Complimentary light bites, all of that. But head over to the website for all the details, Joe. By the way, yeah. Go quick. The VIP I hear is almost sold out. Oh, see, that's the worst. Get it now. Joe, okay. thank you so much. We're going to toss things over to Derek, who is joined by the festival's featured artist this year. All right. Thank you, Courtney. Joe, save me some tickets, okay? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Listen, this year's featured artist, Mackenzie Fisk, I cannot wait to introduce you. So, no surprise, she's the featured artist. Once you see her art, you're going to understand. Mackenzie, welcome to Houston Life. It's great to meet you in person. And I think your work speaks for itself, but let's talk about your journey to becoming an artist because you knew as a young girl you wanted to be an artist but it took you sort of a minute to get there professionally. Definitely. Uh, I come from a family of doctors, and I think it was always kind of the, the thought that it wasn't an intellectual field, but I actually think it's the most intellectual field because I get to sit and paint and listen to podcasts and really, you know, learn about anything I want to learn about while I'm doing the thing that I love. Let's talk about the pairing. I mean, like the photo we're seeing, the painting on the screen with the young girl and the zebra, it seems like you have a love for, you know, people and animals. I really love animals. Oh, okay. So I have a degree in physiology, which worked out really nicely because I get to do this pairing of animals with kids and I get to be really creative within the, within the theme. But yes, my love for animals, I think, is pretty apparent in any city I travel to and I go to uh, many cities across the country over the years or uh, over the, the course of a year. I really just look for the animal adventures in those cities. So I get to do everything that I love in this one career. The the painting in the center here, I found myself really staring at this for a while. You told me during commercial break, you're known for your uh, your paintings of giraffes. Why is that? They're blue. So it is my signature when you look at the pieces. Uh, they have a ton of color in them, but standing back for them, they really do look like the animal. So I don't slap you in the color in the, I'm sorry, I don't slap you in the face with color, but I add a lot of color that's subtle. So when you look at the giraffes, they do look like giraffes. And when you look more closely, you can see that they are blue. And that is like my signature as an artist. Well, it's rich and saturated. Mackenzie Fisk, it's so nice to meet you. Soon to be a Dallas resident, by the way, we should mention that. Go out and see her this weekend because this is just a small sampling of the works you will be selling and show, showing and selling. A reminder, the festival is happening this weekend. For online ticket purchases, be sure to visit BayouCityArtFestival.com or call 713-521. 0133 for more information. Mackenzie Fisk, thank you so much. Joe Pogge, thanks as well. And uh, come on out to the show this weekend. You'll see some familiar KPRC2 faces. Coming up, routine food traffic can cause a change in your home's flooring appearance. We'll share how you can preserve the life of brand new flooring. And we'll get a check of what's coming up on the news at 4 o'clock, including shortages which could affect your Halloween plans. That's when Houston Life returns in just two minutes.
Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Friday Eve at 3.30. Your comments today are oh, killing so us. Earlier in the show, we asked you, when is the time you misunderstood the meaning of something? For me, it happens every day. For Penny, it happened with the Golden Girls theme song, the part that sings, and the card attached would say, well, she thought it was saying, and the heart attack would say. Oh. <laughs> now, I am a Golden Girl. I'm glad it didn't say heart attack. Oh, my gosh, Penny, that's great. Kim writes in, please keep in mind this was a really long time ago. Seems like everybody had Benjamin on the back window of their vehicle. And I said, well, that's ridiculous. All those people are not named Benjamin. Come to find out, Ben Jammin. I don't get it. Ben Jammin? Ben Jammin to oh, the music? Oh, like I've been jamming. Yeah. Oh, like crank up the tunes, I've been jamming. There you go. Okay, gotcha. I was confused there for a minute. Penny writes in, today, had to do a televisit with a doctor today. Had no idea she could see me too. LOL, I was not dressed. I was mortified. Penny, don't worry. It has happened to all of us, and your doctor sees it every single day. I'm sure it was not a problem. Oh, my gosh, that is so good. I love it. Okay, we're going to check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. <laughs> Still giggling over there. Oh, yeah. Those are some funny stories right there. My well, goodness. I heard your whole bear thing, and you were you were utterly confused. <laughs> I have, I still don't understand it. I'm just During trying to gloss over it. commercial break, Courtney <laughs> leans over and says, wait, so what's an otter? I don't know. I've never heard any of this. And so, I, was I, in, I was embarrassed to say, I didn't know the difference between a bear cub and an otter. Yeah, I don't know the difference between that either, to be honest. Um, move along. Isn't That's there a what big the producers difference between are saying. a bear cub and an otter? Oh, well, I'll tell you, Derek, when we oh, go off. Okay. No, okay. I guess we'll I missed this one. Like, we, need, we need someone to tell us later. <laughs> yeah. The human version, Keith. The human ah. version. I kept got, being, okay. back in 05, I'm in Puerto Vallarta, and I keep getting called Poppy. Like, hi, Poppy, hi, Poppy. I'm like, what's a Poppy? <laughs> Why am I being called Pretty Poppy? Flower. It's like, hey, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hi, Poppy. Poppy. Oh. Hey, Poppy. <laughs> I feel like we should be calling you that today with the weather being you know so what? good. Like, you you're hand poppy delivering. You got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got sunshine, but it's hot out there. 90 degrees downtown, 88 southwest, 87 Galveston. Look at that blue sky. It's going to be the same way tomorrow, so keep that in mind. This is for game two. It looks a lot like game one as far as the forecast. The pitch is at 107, first pitch, 90 at three. So if you're going to be hanging out of the stadium, it's going to be on the warm side all the way through. But, hey, we're also the weekend. That high pressure is in place. And that's going to continue to scoot our way. So it'll be right over us tomorrow. So it's going to be calm and clear and hot. Get ready for that. And then as we get into the weekend, more humid. We'll talk about that coming up at four. In the meantime, 89 at 5, 87 at 6, 82 at 7. Sun goes down, actually feels pretty good as we go into this evening. So coming up, we'll talk about some weekend changes. I have two fronts on the boards and when the rain returns. That's all straight ahead. All right, Frank, we'll talk to you then. Thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you at 4 o'clock today. This is a story we've been covering since last night. A three-year-old boy still missing in Grimes County. Investigators telling us that he disappeared into a wooded area with a neighbor's dog. That dog returned but the boy has not been seen since. Well, the latest on the search efforts. We've already told you doctors expect this year's flu to impact more people than last year. We are learning that roughly 40% of Americans have not gotten a flu vaccine or don't intend to get one. A closer look at the reasons why. And with Halloween just 24 days away, retailers are already warning about shortages, which items could be in short supply and ultimately cost you more money as you prepare for trick-or-treating or those Halloween parties. So definitely want to stick around for that guys 24 that's it i know that's all yeah. i know gotta get ready but if you buy the candy now don't think it. you're gonna be able to keep it till then yeah that's I like have to buy yeah. really bad candy so i don't <laughs> <I'm> need <laughs> candy corn here you go kids take the sucky candy <laughs> and then get egged afterwards yeah. <laughs> okay we'll see you guys at okay. the top of the hour <laughs> that's a very good strategy actually it is right okay moving along replacing your flooring is a dramatic way to spruce up the look of our home yeah and no matter which type of flooring you are searching for a company called 50 floor has you covered with all kinds of options to choose from Maria, it's great to see you. Likewise. 50 Floor, as we just mentioned, has way more than 50 options. You literally have hundreds of different options. Hardwood, vinyl, 
laminate, carpet, you, you name, name it, you it. got it. Yes, tile, engineered wood, bamboo. We can bring it all to you and we will offer it to you in the comfort of your own home. There might be options that you didn't even know existed, Derek. So let us inspire you and uh, let you also see all of the samples that we have available. I recently went with my mom. She's been needing to upgrade her floors and we yeah. went to one of these big stores where there are so many options. The folks were not so helpful uh, and we felt totally on our own. But yes. as you mentioned, what really sets apart 50 floor is that you will bring the samples to someone's home. That way they can yes. see the materials in their own space, their own lighting, exactly. their own wall color. Right. I mean, this couch might be very different from the couch that you own and that might make a difference in which style you're going to choose, what color you're going to choose. So seeing it in the comfort of your own home, you're going to be wowed by all of the colors, all of the options, even all of the sizes of the planks that we offer. There are even sheets of vinyl. People sometimes don't know that. So again, we will come to you. We will bring you hundreds of these samples and walk you through step by step so that you don't feel so lonely like you do sometimes when you go to these big box stores. It can be overwhelming for sure. All right, let's talk about the installation process because that is something that truly sets you apart. It's sort of like yes. this magical process where you guys come in, you move the furniture and do all the work in as little as one day. Exactly. I mean, you take one room and you can have a lot of different furniture, you know, pieces and even plants, whatever it is, we're going to move it for you. You don't have to lift a finger. We're going to go ahead and remove the old flooring. We will inspect the subfloor. Sometimes there's little minor things that we can take care of. If not, we'll let you know about that. If the foundation has shifted and so forth, then we're going to put down that new floor. And like you say, usually most projects will take one day, so it just doesn't get better than that. Even if you have some minor fixes needed to that sub floor, that yes. can still happen in one day. All right, let's talk about floor maintenance tips because right. I've heard from you that a lot of your customers will choose the the engineered hardwood, even the vinyl options. Right. If there are children, pets in the home, if the flooring exactly. is used maybe in a mudroom or off a pool. Um, but you have some tips if people have just regular hardwood as well. Right. I mean, you know, hardwood I think is the hardest to maintain. And if you've ever owned hardwood, yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. So a tip that we like to tell people for high traffic areas is very simple. Just throw down an area rug also, if you're going to have some uh, of that wood exposed by a light or let's say by the natural light by window, same thing, just throw down a, an area rug. But of course, you're going to have to take care of your hardwood floors a lot more, I guess, meticulously than if you did an engineered wood, for example, and vinyl and laminate that can just be mopped up and carpet. Another thing to maintaining carpet that some people don't know is you do have to get it deep cleaned every year. I don't know if you did that, but sometimes I know my family members don't do that and we're like, you have to get it cleaned and you have to usually repair it or just pick it up uh, every eight years it's kind of like your mattress that all of those allergens get trapped and you really can't pick them up with a vacuum after eight years so if you're watching and it's been over eight years Derek I don't know if you're included in that group you need to call 50 floor call or clean those carpets every yes. single year I pulled up carpet once and what I found underneath was alarming not I'm not gonna pretty. tell you what it was Maria Sotolongo <laughs> it's great to see you thank you for having me it is true, under that carpet was a nightmare. 50 Floor has a special offer for Houston Life viewers. Call within the next hour and save 60% off all materials. You can also use the promo code Houston Life to get an extra $100 off your order. Just call 877-50-FLOOR. That's 877-503-5667. Or, of course, you can check them out online, 50floor.com. All right, switching gears now, it's Throwback Thursday, of course. And Lauren Kelly is standing by with a former teen heartthrob who's headed back on tour. Hey, Lauren. I'm so excited, you guys. Joey McIntyre of the New Kids on the Block is giving us the step-by-step -step details on their new Mixtape 2022 tour, which is heading to Houston next summer. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Block are arguably the world's biggest boy band and have been giving fans the right stuff since 1984. And now Donnie, Danny, Joey, Jordan, Jonathan just announced that they're hitting the road again. And I got to chat with Joey McIntyre all about what fans can expect from their upcoming big show. When we talk about the new kids in the block, we're talking 70 million albums worldwide, countless tours, a bazillion fans. What is the secret sauce that you guys have had that just keeps it going for so long? 
this time, I think a sense of humor actually comes comes to mind, you know, and that that means like having a good time, but certainly not taking yourself too seriously, but taking our relationship with our fans seriously. I mean, we we really do feel like we have the best fans in pop history, you know, and we want to excite them. And it's like a marriage, you know, you want to keep it exciting and you want to, you know, keep surprising each other. And, you know, they keep showing up for us. So we uh, we try not to mess it up. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking marriage, you guys have a lot of wives, a lot yeah. of wives. Yes, yes, <laughs> we do. Well, you know, they thought they were like, as a 11 year old writing in their book, you know, you know, Miss Stephanie, you know, Knight or, you know, Melissa Wahlberg, you know what I mean? Like, it really mattered, you know, it worked I'm out. I'm not gonna tell you that listening. I did that, Joey. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you or admit that I did that. You yeah. know what's really funny? You you say that all these fans have literally grown up with you. I, myself, uh, was one of them. In 88, you guys stopped here, and by some chance, my best friend's dad got us backstage. And check this out, look at that, look at that sweater. That's a Here's good one. Jordan, but hold on. Here's da uh, Danny. Here's us with Danny. Hunting you with the backstage pass. Look at that, and look at Danny's rat tail. That's super cool still. Now, where are you? Are you, are you in the white? or? No, that, that's me with the crazy side ponytail. That sweater, you need to find that sweater. I know, I know. But let me tell you something, Joey. I was so upset that day because you were the only one that didn't come out. But I will tell you what. I did, down the road, get to meet you. Hey. Welcomed you to Houston when the Super Bowl was in town. I love it, and I wore my Patriots outfit. Yes, you sure did, Joey. And this is a personal, personal question of mine. If the new kids on the block had a favorite letter of the alphabet, what would it be? Um, I think it would be L and K. No, no, that's the wrong answer. It needs to be O O O. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you are so right. And oh, 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 and oh, oh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, but that is, obviously, I missed that one. You, you got me. Joey, thank you so much for taking a trip down memory lane with us. We, we can't wait to have you guys come to Houston in May for the Mixtape Tour. We're looking forward to it. Tickets on sale tomorrow. Joey, you're welcome in our Houston Life Studios anytime. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, goodness. So Did they really have to do that? I love it. <laughs> we are so going to this concert. We, we are so to. going to this show. And since I am such a big fan, I know you guys are too, our Houston Blockheads. We wanted to test your knowledge of all things New Kids on the Block. So Derek and Courtney, you know what time it is. It's quiz time. Oh, we love it. We've got a dry erase board in front of you. Okay. And we've got some very special answers to these questions today. There are four answers. I will give you an A, B, C, or D choice and okay. you tell me what you think they are, okay? So question number one, who founded the New Kids on the Block? Tommy Mottola, Frank Bilt, Maurice Starr, or David Foster? And we're supposed to write our answers? You can. Tommy Mottola, David Bilt, I'm sorry, Frank Bilt, Maurice Starr, or David Foster? Early in the 80s, early in the 80s. Mm. Uh. Okay, I don't know. Okay. D. I'm going D. You're going D, David Foster? I'm going Foster. Tommy Mottola, Tommy who Mottola. also uh, was in front Mariah, Mariah Carey's. Carey's. Uh, yeah, well, let's take a was... look. Let's take a look and see what uh, Joey had to say about this one. I would say Maurice Starr and Donnie Wahlberg. Sorry, guys, you're both wrong. So oh. Maurice Starr was the founder, Donnie Wahlberg, the first original member. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Tommy Mottola was... for sure was Mariah, and then, of course, David Foster. Gotcha. Right. I didn't know the yeah. other two guys. All right, question number two. Okay. Of the five band members who we know to be new kids on the block, who was the second person to join the band after Donnie? Danny, Jordan, Jonathan, or Joey? Who was the second person? These are tough. The band members that we know. Honestly, Danny, I'm Jordan, kind of taking a shot in the dark here. C. Jonathan and Joey. You're going to go with Jonathan? Yes. You're going to go with Jordan. Courtney, you're going to go with Jonathan. Jonathan. All right, let's Jordan. see what, what Joey had to say. I think it was Jordan, and then Danny was like, okay, I'll do it if Jordan's doing it. 
There you go. It was, of course, da Donnie first, okay. then briefly his brother Mark Wahlberg, and then Jordan Knight joined the band. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Mark Wahlberg was a new kid for a minute? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know you knew. I love him. <laughs> She's like, oh, I know. Kid. When, yeah. When's yeah, that show happen? I'm working on that still, Courtney. <laughs> All right, question number three. New Kids on the Block was not the name of the original group. What was it? Was it Boys on the Block, Nanook, Boys of Boston, or Stag? New Kids on the Block was not their original name. What was it? Boys on the Block, Nanook, Boys of Boston, or Stag? I, I mean, I, I've never this, heard this, this is question crazy. at all. Stag and Boys of Boston. Let's take a look and see what Joey had to say. Uh, Nanook, which what? no one could pronounce and no one understood, and that's why we changed it. There you go, Nanook. Apparently, uh, our boss, Ken, our executive producer, said it's kind of a New England term for someone who's, it's a polite way of saying you're being an idiot. So that's interesting, and we're all learning interesting that. Interesting choice of the band's name. Is there but a that's why they way changed it. you're being an idiot? <laughs> All right, last okay, question for time. No. time. No. Which member of the NKOTB family recently became a grandfather? Danny, Donnie, Jonathan, or Jordan? Oh, man. Oh, somebody's a granddad. Danny, Donnie, Jonathan, or Jordan? Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, okay. stab in the dark. Yeah, Donnie, Shot in the dark. Courtney's okay. going with Danny. Let's see what Joey had to say. Because Danny Wood. Two, but he's got two, two kid, two grandkids now. They're gorgeous. Yeah, I got Gordon one. Got one. I got one. <laughs> you changed Donnie to Danny. Got it. You both got it. You're such a big fan. Yay! That All right, fun, you guys. Thanks it was fun, along. and I love that he played along too. He was so sweet. I love chatting with him. Tickets for the mixtape tour go on sale tomorrow, 11 a.m. But if you want to check out the new Kids on the Block in concert for yourself, we are giving away three pairs of tickets. What? To our insiders. Oh, wow. All you have to do is head over to clicktohouston.com slash insider or scan the QR code in the top of your screen. Okay, so Lauren. Thanks for the good Come news. Come on, Courtney. Ready? Uh, I know. Uh, 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 who, who was the winner of this? Come uh, on. Not me. Cat, our producer, is going to bring in some lovely cassette mixtape oh, cookies courtesy of our friends lovely. from the Toyota Center. This is Center. so cute. Thank All right, you, you guys. Thank you so much. Sure. We're going to check back in with Joe Sam right now, who's still hunting for ghosts at the Rosenberg Railroad Museum. Joe, you find anything yet? So I did get a little spook and chill inside of the Quebec, but you know we had to come outside now where I got my wish. I'm finally tall as I can be. I'm a giant over the city of Rosenberg. We're going to be talking about their fall fest when we come back here on Houston Life. In the meantime, I'm going to go and try and smash some of these villages like Godzilla. But right now, we'll be right back in just a bit. Welcome back to Houston Live. So when we came back, we were just talking about the Quebec and all of the cool ghost huntings that they have happening there. That's something for the adults to get in, uh, inside up here in Rosenberg. But we want to talk about what the kids can have fun doing. And that's why we have Randy joining us here at this beautiful garden here in Miniature City of Rosenberg. This is absolutely incredible. And Fall Fest is going to be just that too. Incredible. That is right. We are getting so excited about Fall Fest this Saturday. We're ready for the people to come out and have a good time. We're going to have a rideable trackless train. Oh. This whole street in front of us will be shut down for all kinds of food, food trucks, snow cone trucks, um, barbecue, popcorn, bounce houses, yeah. and games and prizes for everybody. All included in your admission, food, souvenirs, drinks are extra, of course, but all of the family fun is here, plus a full oh, new yeah. band open house. Come out and learn about Rosenberg in the city and railroading in Fort Bend County. And it's going to be cool for them to come out here and take a look at this miniature city here with all of the different trains that's going by, all of the little miniature buildings. We got gringos in the back here. That's going to be really, really cool. And then there's also a big event that you guys are doing for Halloween as well. Yes. So earlier when we were in the Quebec, we talked about ghost stories. So we have Halloween Fun Day, which is activities from 10 to 4 on October 30th. But from 5 to 8 p.m., when it starts to get dark out, yeah. 
<laughs> our staff and volunteers dress up, and they've got some spooky stories for you in all our exhibits, including the Quebec. So it's a oh. fun time to come out, do some trick-or-treating with the kids, and also go into those exhibits and get spooked. That's what I love, getting you spooked by all of those ghosts that are just floating around here in the city of Rosenberg. Really, really cool. We're going to have all of that information for your families to come out on our website, HoustonLife.tv. In the meantime, i got to go and spot out some more buildings. We just finished getting milkshakes from here. What's the place called? Another time, Soda Fountain Shop. There we go. And they have it all here in yes. this miniature re replication of the city of Rosenberg. Absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Courtney and Derek are going to send things back to you in the studio for now. All right, Joe. And there's so many things to do before and after the Railroad for Museum. Sure. Pay them a visit. All right, after the break, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show when we shake things up in honor of a Hollywood classic. More on that when Houston Life returns. Happening tomorrow on Houston Life, the North American premiere of the new James Bond film, No Time to Die, is happening. And here at Houston Life, we're going all out. We certainly are. We're taking a look back at all the Bond films through the years, from making the perfect martini to hitting the road and a classic Aston Martin. We are honoring the secret agent icon 007. It's going to be a pretty good time. So many different Bonds over the years, Bond girls. It'll be fun to take a trip down memory lane. I'm super excited about the latest film. That's going to do it for us on this Thursday. We'll see you all tomorrow. Let's toss it over now to Keith and Christine. Hi, guys. Hey, okay, the Aston Martin is my absolute favorite car in the world, Ooh, so yeah. if you guys want to surprise me and have one of those, I will come over and hang out with yeah, you guys. Yeah, listen, you Just never saying. know what we're going to have. Okay, hey, Aston Martin, way to go.